Lately, I have been reading a lot of interesting headlines about Parmesan cheese, and I picked out a couple of the juiciest ones to share with you, like the Parmesan cheese you sprinkle on your penne could be wood, or why are people freaking out about wood pulp in their Parmesan cheese? Now, as a food scientist, when I see headlines like these, I feel really inclined to investigate and figure out if there's any truth behind the headlines. And in this case, there seems to be a little truth, and that's because there are a handful of cheese companies that are currently in court because of some problems with their Parmesan cheese products. Now the cheese products that are causing all these issues are the grated Parmesan cheeses you find in the canister and also your shredded, your pre-shredded Parmesan cheeses. And that's because these canisters and packaging typically say something like 100% shredded Parmesan cheese or 100% grated Parmesan cheese. But if you take this and turn it around to look at that ingredient statement, there is more ingredients than just cheese. It's not 100% cheese. Now you might be wondering, how is it legal for them to say on the front of their packaging, 100% grated Parmesan cheese, when it's not 100% Parmesan cheese? And for that, you need a little background in food law. So I recognize this because I have been educated in food law and regulations. I'm not sure otherwise anyone would catch this difference in the claims, but in food laws, it's really important the specific wording, like slightly different words can have huge implications and differences for food products. So I want to show you the CFR, that's the Code of Federal Regulations. And this is like the book if you are a food scientist because it defines what a certain food is, what ingredients can be used, how it is to be processed. And so you need to follow these rules to be a food manufacturer. So here we are on the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 21. This is where a lot of food laws and regulations are. And this is for grated cheeses. Now, where I want to go down to is part 4C, because this shows that for grated cheeses, there are optional ingredients like antimycotics, that's anti-molding agents, anti-caking agents, spices, and flavorings. So for the definition of a grated cheese, you can add these optional ingredients and it is considered a grated cheese product which means when that canister of Parmesan cheese says 100% grated Parmesan cheese, that's legal, even though they use extra ingredients because the definition of a grated cheese includes those antimycotics, those anti-caking agents in it. So it would have been illegal if they claimed 100% Parmesan cheese and didn't have grated in that claim, but they do. A grated cheese includes these extra non-cheese ingredients. So from the perspective of the cheese company or the cheese manufacturer, they probably feel like, you know, we were following the legal definition of grated Parmesan cheese. It was 100% grated Parmesan cheese because the legal definition says we can add these extra ingredients. But from the perspective of the average consumer, the everyday person, you're probably thinking, well, how was I supposed to know there was even a difference? Why would something that says 100% grated Parmesan cheese not be 100% Parmesan cheese? That's incredibly frustrating. So I think I can see this argument from both sides and I understand how it ended up in a lawsuit. This court case was first litigated back in 2018 and at the time the judge decided that the label was fine on the cheese products and he said that if a consumer wanted to know more about what was in this 100% grated Parmesan cheese, they could just turn it over and look at the ingredient statement 
if they wanted to actually know what each ingredient was. But now the same lawsuit was appealed to a higher court. And in December 2020, the new court actually said, no, these labels are misleading and deceptive. The full repercussions for the cheese companies involved, that part is still being sorted out in court. If I had to guess, this is going to change that label, the 100% label that these products are able to have that will probably be taken away. But I don't think it's going to change what extra ingredients are added to these grated and shredded cheeses because these ingredients are added for really specific reasons, which I want to get into now. Now, if you actually do take the time to turn one of these grated Parmesan cheeses over, and look at the ingredient statement, you'll see two very common additives. The first is cellulose and then potassium sorbate. So let's start with potassium sorbate. I think this is the easier one to explain. So this is an antimicotic or an anti-molding agent, which helps extend the shelf life. It helps the product from not having any microbial growth or at least mold growth and it allows the product to sit out at warmer temperatures, at room temperatures, without any mold growing. So that's why potassium sorbate is usually included. That other ingredient is called cellulose, and this is interesting because I'm pretty sure this is where all the rumors about wood pulp or sawdust in your Parmesan cheese all began. Now, if you've ever taken a botany class, you might recognize the term cellulose because it's a really important component of plant cell walls. So cellulose makes up these little microtubules in the cell wall that give it a lot of strength and rigidity. It helps give a lot of structure to the cell wall. Now, only plants have a cell wall. Animals only have cell membranes. But with that being said, because all cell walls in plants contain cellulose, this means all plants contain cellulose. So anytime we eat a fruit or veggie or a grain or any type of edible plant, we are actually eating cellulose. Where I think the confusion came in is that cellulose is in wood pulp and sawdust, right? Those, those products come from trees and trees are technically plants, so they have cellulose and cellulose is in these grated cheeses. But that doesn't mean that wood pulp and sawdust are in your grated cheeses because cellulose is in any edible plant. It's in apples, broccoli, spinach. It's, it's part of the plant's cell wall. So anytime you eat a plant, you are eating cellulose. You might still be wondering why is cellulose in these cheeses anyways? Well, it's known as an anti-caking agent. So the cellulose stops these little particles or crumbles from sticking together and forming one big cohesive mass. So if we didn't add cellulose to these grated cheeses, it wouldn't be able to just sit unrefrigerated in the grocery store and just spend months sitting in your kitchen without becoming like one big hard hockey puck. So this allows the cheese to have a really long shelf life and still, you know, pour out when you, you turn it over. And before you say, ew, I don't want cellulose added to my food, I'd venture that a lot of you are actually trying to add more cellulose to your diet right now. And that's because cellulose is considered a dietary fiber. So it means it's a molecule that makes it through digestion intact into your gut to be fermented by the microbes in your gut. And this has been associated with a lot of beneficial health aspects. So a lot of people are trying to get more fiber in their diet. So you could see also see cellulose added to, you know, those high fiber granola bars or high fiber pasta to enhance the fiber content. And so by having more cellulose in your diet or this dietary fiber, if we go to the FDA's website, it actually has a whole list of health benefits like lowering blood glucose levels, lowering your cholesterol, your blood pressure, um, that sort of thing. So actually cellulose in your diet is considered a dietary fiber and has been seen to have a lot of good health effects. I totally understand if you don't want any extra ingredients in your cheese, you just want 100% cheese. 
If that's the case, you probably won't be able to buy this grated or pre-shredded cheese in the grocery store. What you need to do to get the real deal is go to the cheese section and get a wedge of cheese or something cut from a cheese wheel. And this will be 100% cheese. You probably will end up spending a little bit more to get a real cheese. It's, it's more expensive because it takes a lot of expertise to make this product and it has to, selling up Parmesan ages a really long time. So it will cost you a bit more, but something like this is the real deal. So in the end, you really don't have to be worried about wood pulp in your Parmesan cheeses. This fight is really over cellulose, the food additive cellulose. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and for notifications, every time I post a new video, hit the bell icon. I'll talk to you next time.